Hey everybody! This is Death by D4, and welcome to my guide on how to play as the Battlesmith Artificer subclass in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. There's a lot to go over, so be sure to subscribe, and let's dive right on in. When you take the subclass at 3rd level, you gain proficiency in Smith's Tools. That is, unless you already have this, in which case you gain proficiency in another artisan tools of your choice. Nothing crazy, but still a nice feature to have. You also gain your Battlesmith spells at 3rd level, which expands the number of spells available to you as an Artificer. Best of all, these spells don't count towards your spell preparation limit, meaning that you'll always have access to them whenever you need them. Of the selection made available to you, I'm going to give special shoutouts to Shield, Conjure Barrage, Banishing Smite, and Mass Cure Wounds, as all of those are just really good spells for you to have access to in general. You also get Battle Ready at 3rd level, which grants you proficiency in martial weapons and, whenever you make an attack or damage roll with a magical weapon, you can now use your Intelligence modifier instead of your Strength or Dexterity in order to make these rolls. Wow, this is absolutely an incredible feature for you, and it can really change up how you want to approach combat with this class in general. After all, being able to use what is your spellcasting modifier for weapons like the Warhammer, Great Axe, or even the Heavy Crossbow just opens up so much potential for you, especially when you take into account your Infuse item feature. That said, and I'm only saying this because I know how the math works out in the end, just keep in mind that the damage output of this feature can fall off as your cantrip scale beyond it. Otherwise, this is still an awesome feature for you to have, and one that you're bound to get a lot of use out of over time. And finally, for your last third level feature, you also get Steel Defender, which grants you a robotic companion. The Steel Defender shares initiative with you during combat and gets its own stat block as well. It can do a variety of things, including a force damaging attack, a self healing repair, and even a reaction that can impose disadvantage on an incoming attack against a creature within 5 feet of it. You can also use the Mending Cantrip in order to help recover some of its hit points, and if it's ever destroyed, you can then rebuild a new one after finishing a long rest. Wow, this is a really nice feature for you to have, both in terms of mechanics and for roleplay. Yes, your Steel Defender doesn't necessarily deal a whole lot of damage, but its ability to help you or an ally tank damage shouldn't be understated, as that can make a whole lot of difference when utilized correctly. All in all, a really nice feature for you to have, and one that you're bound to have a lot of fun with in general. At 5th level, you get Extra Attack, which allows you to attack twice on your turn. Simple, yet highly effective. At 9th level, you get Arcane Jolt, which allows you to deal additional damage or heal an ally whenever you land an attack with a magical weapon or your Steel Defender a number of times equal to your Intelligence modifier per long rest. If you choose to deal damage, you deal an additional 2d6 force damage to the target of your attack. If you choose to heal, then a creature within 30 feet of your target gains 2d6 hit points. Wow! Whichever way you choose to use this feature, this is definitely a really nice feature for you to have, as it could really help you amplify your damage output or help stabilize the party. Honestly, the simple fact that you could do this for free on your turn is absolutely incredible for you, as it won't interfere with anything that you do on your turn when you use it. All in all, this is just a really nice feature for you to have and one that you should definitely make use out of when you get there. Finally, at 15th level, you get Improved Defender, which, despite its name, actually improves your Steel Defender and your Arcane Jolt. With your Arcane Jolt, the amount of damage or healing that you can deal with it increases to 46, and with your Steel Defender, it gains a plus 2 bonus to its AC, and whenever you use its Deflect Attack Reaction, the attacker takes force damage equal to 1d4 plus your Intelligence modifier. Wow. Honestly, all of these bonuses are really good for you to have, especially the improvement to Deflect Attack. After all, the damage that it deals is basically unavoidable, so that's pretty incredible in and of itself. Either way, just a really nice set of bonuses for you to receive, and overall a really nice feature for you to end things off with this particular subclass. Alright, so that does it for all the subclass features, now on just a few of my own personal recommendations concerning it. First off, this subclass definitely plays well into the idea of being a melee-focused spellcaster, so don't be afraid of trying to fit into that role if you really want to. However, if you still want to hang out in the back lines, just remember that your Steel Defender can still be useful in helping your intended frontline ally tank, and the utility of your infusions can really pair well with your ranged weapon options. After all, you do gain access to Repeating Shot, and that can pair extremely well with a heavy crossbow. Now, as for your race, consider playing as a Rock Gnome, as that's going to be a really good fit for an Artificer in general. You could still look into playing as a Dwarf for this particular subclass, but it's still possible for you to get a good amount of use out of the Gnome races as well, especially if you're going to be focusing on ranged options instead. Either way, just keep it in mind for you as a possible option. Finally, let's talk about feats. Now, if you're planning on going into melee range, you could take Heavily Armored, as that will then allow you to actually wear Heavy Armor. Likewise, you could look into taking Sentinel as well, if you want to try and lock down opponents around you, or Tough if you want to be able to stack on even more hit points for yourself. Otherwise, if you're going for range, consider taking Crossbow Expert and Sharpshooter, as both of these just pair really well with you in general, and will boost the power of your range attacks quite considerably. And that's it! 
If you liked the video, then be sure to subscribe and let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you'd like to have the chance to play D&D with me, then feel free to join my Discord server, and consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next video.